We reached into our archives to share with you a story about when dog adoptions don't work out. Stephanie Nelson takes us through her heartbreaking journey, falling in love with a dog who just couldn't stay with him. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in Ottawa, Canada. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. Dog adoptions can be hard. You only have a short space of time to decide whether the dog you've just met is the one that you want to spend the next 10 plus years with, invite into your home, introduce to your family, and let's be honest, make quite a financial commitment to as well. So we'll find out what happens when a dog adoption doesn't work out. That and more on today's show. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's take a walk, because we've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey Pepper, want to go for a walk? Claire, have you ever adopted a dog? I've adopted several dogs, and I've had an adoption which didn't work out for my dog even though it wasn't a dog we adopted. Ooh, we'll have to talk about that later on. But first, let's hear a story from our archives about how a friend of mine who basically knew that this was the dog she needed to add to her family didn't turn out to be the right one. Petey was my first dog. And by that I mean my own, not shared with anybody else, dog. I always had dogs growing up that my parents chose, and I loved them, Emil and Tina and Duncan and Riley. But they were family dogs. And then when I was around 37, I had gone through a stage of uh, going through divorce and losing my mother. And I really felt the need for some space and time to heal. And I moved away from New York City. From my sister, from my friends, and from my dog Lulu, who I shared with my ex-husband, to Hawaii, where I would not know anybody. And before I moved, a really good friend advised me to, once I was settled, consider getting a dog of my own. So that is what brought me to the Maui Humane Society uh, one spring to walk along the aisles and see if I could find a dog that I sparked with. And I didn't really know what I was looking for, but suddenly in kennel number 72, there was this little black dog with a long body, short legs, super sweet face. And the little plastic label said his name was Jack, which is a good name, and that he was three years old, which was perfect. I was living on my own. I was working full time and I needed a dog, not a puppy, who was house trained and could spend some time on their own. So I kneel down in front of this cage. I tell him this story all the time and remind him that he jumped up and licked my hand. And that's how we both knew. And 48 hours later, I had adoption papers and I had him in the seat beside me in the car. But I did look at him and think, I don't think his name is Jack. And I decided it was Petey. And it was. And he and I drove home. Turns out that, in fact, Petey was not three years old. He was closer to 10 months old and a teething puppy, 
which was very evident from the accumulation of my chewed shoes, bikinis, underwear hats, cockroach traps, Swedish Christmas wooden ornaments, and a favorite copy of Rumi, which still has a giant bite out of it to this day. <laughs> Petey also turned out to be the silent type. And I mean, he would sit and stare in a way that pierced your soul and got him what he wanted. I also quickly learned he was scared of many, many things from a innocent coconut lying unexpectedly under a bush or a scary potted basil plant that just happened to be out on the porch. And I would know he was scared because he would stand at a safe distance with his tail on high alert, growling at whatever was the frightening object. Which to me was really funny until I realized how many scary things there were out there for him. Including skateboards. Including men. Including very big dogs. There was a Great Dane he met in the park one day, and he hightailed it out as fast as his little legs could carry him, with me chasing behind, terrified uh, that I would lose this dog. The most uh, unfortunate of all, however, was his fear of children and strangers, and I had to carefully introduce him to every person who came to my door. Petey's first encounter with a child was a little three-year-old that lived next door and I had a small apartment but with a fenced-in yard and I discovered one day that the boy had been throwing sticks at Petey over the fence. One day when I wasn't home that boy lost his ball, ran into my yard through the gate and Petey bit him on the stomach. He did not break skin, but the boy was bruised, obviously scared, and the father was angry and threatened to report us. And I was scared. I immediately found a wonderful, compassionate trainer who came and assessed Petey uh, to help me understand him better. And she said he was not aggressive, but he was really anxious and when scared was going to react with a nip or a bite. And she said he was a dinos, which stands for dogs in need of space. But all this meant I couldn't leave him unattended. I couldn't just have anybody come and stay with him. It had to be somebody who understood his special needs. I worried about him a lot. I worried about him being reported. I worried about him biting someone. And he did. And I worried about him being put down someday. Despite the anxiety, once Petey knew you, he was super sweet. And he has wiggled and wormed his way into a number of human hearts over the years. And his trainer and I continued to work on his anxiety for all of the years to come. So despite the anxiety and his fears, Petey and I still went everywhere together. We went on road trips, we went on hikes, we went to the beaches, we moved to New York City together, we moved to Chicago together. And along the way, we found a family. We met my now husband, Jesse, and his then six-year-old twin boys. Though I will say that very first night when we all were in the same house together, I didn't sleep because I was afraid that those twins would wake up and come need something and Petey would bite them. But we had the trainer and she helped sensitize him and he honestly somehow just knew that they were our family. And in a very short period of time, we were all curled up together for story times at night. Over the years, he started to mellow a little. Then we come to March, 2020. 
Breaking news tonight, the coronavirus forcing millions more Americans into virtual lockdown. Over 75 million people in New York, California, Illinois and Connecticut ordered to stay at home. The U.S. borders to Mexico and Canada set to close to non-essential travel. A spring break crackdown. Florida communities closing beaches. In Europe, the crisis growing inside the ICU in Italy, the country's deadliest day. And the pandemic shuts down the world. Now I am teaching from home virtually, and I have two eighth grade stepsons who are at home in school virtually, and nobody is happy, and it is hard, and it is tiresome, and we are home, and we are tired, and we are there every day, and it is hard, and the days are long, and the emotions are tough. So over the years, Jesse and I had talked about getting another dog. I, I would love multiple dogs, but we thought, well, Petey's a one-dog family. But he was getting older and mellowing, and we were all struggling to find some joy during this incredibly hard time in the world. And I kept looking at rescue sites, finding cute little puppies. And one day, Jesse said, you know, we could use some joy. <laughs> So we went and we looked and we came home with a teeny tiny rescue pup who was maybe six weeks old, a beautiful burnt caramel color, a little diamond shaped white patch on the back of her neck. And we named her Juniper. And we decided to raise her together in our joint parenthood. So as opposed to Petey's silence, Juniper was everything but. She was chatty, she was barky, she was squeaky. She was also an expert napper. She was just dashing around the yard, discovering stairs, finding palm fronds. Everything was new and exciting, which made everything new and exciting to us as well. Come here, Juniper. Good morning. Always had a big step. You did it yesterday. <coughs> Petey accepted her arrival in his usual silent manner. He didn't exactly rejoice, but he did put up with it. Juniper just gazed at him with admiration, just like, oh, my big brother Petey is so wonderful. And he would just stare at me and ignore her. Still, we did things together. Uh, He's never been a morning dog, but Juniper was up before dawn, and so... I would walk him while Jesse would carry Juniper in a little sling because she was too young to be on the ground. And the four of us would go out in the morning. I would walk him on his leash. Jesse would carry Juniper in her sling because she was too young to be on the ground. And she was just alert to the world. And the four of us watched the sunrise week after week after week. And it was magical. But Juniper was also really needy. She wanted to be with us all the time. We tried to fence in the yard a little bit so she could roam safely, but within seconds she had scrambled her way to the top, nearly injuring herself. We had a playpen inside so that when we were eating or watching TV, she could be in the playpen near us, and that was not enough for her. She would shake the rungs with her teeth. She would try to climb out. She would screech. Um, If we went outside, she would yelp so loudly you could hear it across the cul-de-sac. If she was on their side of the screen door, she would throw herself against it. And I started to worry. We worried a little bit, but we also thought maybe this is just puppy behavior. So we called back our wonderful trainer and she helped us work with her and thought it would get better. Um, We also thought maybe she wasn't getting to play enough, Petey being a senior and also completely uninterested. So one day we thought she was ready and we brought her to doggy daycare for a little puppy socialization. But when we picked her up, our trainer was waiting for us at the porch and Juniper was just pressed against the wall. She had a tiny cut under her eye 
she had apparently freaked out when we left. She had slammed herself against the crate to injure herself. She had scared off the other adult dogs. Um, and now she couldn't barely recognize us. And our trainer said that she suspected separation anxiety. And she talked to us and she said uh, it could be better, but it would take effort. It would take energy. It would take commitment um, that Juniper might need owners who could be home with her and that we needed to really be honest with ourselves and consider whether or not we had it in us and if this puppy was right for us. And if it wasn't, she said, you need to rehome her as soon as possible to give her the best chance at a good life with another family. So needless to say, I cried all the way home. It was a very long, painful drive. I I couldn't believe it, and yet it, it all made sense. Um, it certainly explained the extremeness of her behavior. But I also knew I was going back to work. School was opening up. Uh, Jesse worked full time out of the house. And did we have it in us to help Juniper? So the next few days were just like this hazy tear-soaked family time with Juniper that was laced with sadness and we took her in adventures and we fed her and we napped with her and we just kept thinking do we have it in us we had two teenagers who were really struggling with their lives at this moment and it had taken me years of energy to manage Petey's anxiety and get him to the place where he was now And Jesse said, I don't think we can give her what she needs. So I was then angry with him because he was being Mr. Rational. And here I am having my heart broken. So it took a couple of days, but we did call up the rescue organization and explained what was going on with Juniper and what was going on with us. And they said, well, can you bring her back this afternoon? So I said... I need to feed her lunch first. It'll be two years this spring since we found Juniper and rehomed Juniper. And I think about her a lot. When I think back on that day when we had to drive her back, my heart, my throat just tighten. Uh, Jesse drove in silence, staring forward at the road and Juniper was snuggled around my neck, and she smelled sweet. And when we got there and I got out of the car and I had to hand her over, I I whispered to her that I hoped she'd have a wonderful life. But as I tried to pass her, she held onto my sweater with little teeny outstretched paws, and I actually had to unhook her nails from my sweater. And I'm not sure I'm ever going to recover from that. We think she taught Petey to be vocal. He's still mostly the silent type, but now, every now and then, he barks to come inside impatiently. He plays with her favorite toy, which is a tiny, squeaky alligator, which makes us really smile, and then it also hurts. I know she found a home a few days later, but I have no idea where. I don't know where she is. I don't know her name. I avoid still the photos and the videos that are stored on my phone. And I really still struggle with knowing that I let her go and that I allowed her to be let go. Petey and I are still together. He's gone gray in many places, as have I. His anxieties have mellowed, as have mine. He doesn't do long hikes anymore, but we still go for walks. His eyesight isn't great and he has fallen down the stairs. But he's bounced back and he's still his mostly silent, ornery, sweet self. And Jesse has promised him he can live out his remaining years in his favorite sun patches out on the grass. That story from my friend Stephanie Nelson, who actually entered it in our 101 Dog Stories contest, If you have a great dog story that you would like to share with us, go to dogpodcastnetwork.com slash 101. Claire, it's just so touching when you hear that and that a dog adoption can 
teach us so much. I think it's also really important to talk about something which is something that we don't like to talk about, which is that sometimes dogs aren't right for your family. And sometimes that can be immediate as it was with your friend, but sometimes your family circumstances change and dogs do have to be surrendered. And I think there's a lot of difficulty talking about that because, you know, the whole dog is for life and everything else. But sometimes it's best for the dog to put it in the right home if the right home isn't your home. Absolutely. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, I want to hear a little bit about that story you teased at the top about what you learned from an adoption that didn't work out. We'll be right back. And now, a message from your dog. Every day with you is like a day at the beach, and I want as many beach days as possible. I want to run and sniff and find a good stick to carry. I want to roll in the grass and warm my belly in the sun. I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want Everpuff. The green, grassy, beef liver spike smell wakes my senses. You may not realize this, but it tastes like homemade gravy, especially when you wet it. It infuses any food you give me with health and life and vibrancy. I can feel it, Everpuff traveling to every cell in my body, nourishing each one. It helps me feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm so glad you're giving it to me every day because every day I'm so glad to be with you. I wouldn't have it any other way. I want my Everpup. It just makes me feel good. I am so grateful to be your dog and for the Everpup you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup every day. Welcome back to Dog Edition. So Claire, you said that you had a dog that, or an adoption that didn't work out. What's that of story? Yeah, well, I teased a little bit because it wasn't a dog that we adopted that didn't work out, but it did impact on our dog that we already had. So this is going back about, oh, 12 years ago. We were living in Cyprus. As I'm sure you're aware, there are a lot of homeless cats and dogs in Cyprus and it really tugs on the heartstrings because you want to rehome them all and you can't. Mm -hmm. And we decided to take in a cat. We already had a dog who by that stage was about four years old and quite a large dog. This is um, our dog who is a Collie Malamute Great Pyrenean Golden Retriever Cross. Okay. What was his name? <laughs> uh, her name was Macy. Macy. And uh, she's she was a Canadian dog and we brought her to Cyprus. And we brought in this quite large black cat. And we had a trial week, as you do, mm -hmm. where they say, see if it works out in the house. Right. And this cat had previously been a, a feral cat living in Cyprus mm -hmm. and was very street savvy, very, you know, it was quite a strong character. This cat used to actively stalk our dog around the house. <laughs> what do you mean stalk? And we had sort of, <laughs> don't, I mean, so, well, we had sort of, um, if you imagine a ground floor in our house sort of flowed, you know, where every room leads into another room and you can yeah. sort of walk around and around in circles. <laughs> and we would sit in the sitting room and we would watch the dog come into the sitting room, take a look and see that the cat was in there and then retreat rapidly or vice versa. The cat would come in and the dog was in there and the dog would just scarper. And this is a big dog. You know, this is like a dog that's, what, four times the size of the cat? More than that. Mm -hmm. And this went on and on for a week and we thought, well, it'll get better. We'll give it, you know, we'll, we'll see how the relationship develops. They ended up in a scrap where, the, you know, it was not the dog who was fighting with the cat. It was very much the cat fighting with the dog. Yeah. And we just said, this is not going to work. We can't compromise the happy home of the existing pet for the one that <laughs> we have brought in. So we had to take the cat back. And I... I feel so much of that story about Juniper I can relate to because it's terrible. You, you put them in the car, just as mm -hmm. she was describing, and you take this pet back, having thought that you were going to save it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it did go on to another home, but 
I still feel bad about it. And actually, what happened is we then got another dog. So well, I was going to say, did Macy miss the cat when the cat was no oh, longer no. there? No, I mean, the, the, it was the first time in seven days she could relax. <laughs> she was like, you know. <laughs> um, and it's it's so interesting because the dynamic is very different. You know, you often hear about cats who, for instance, have the upstairs of a house reserved just for them because the dog <laughs> bothers them and so they go upstairs. But <laughs> right. the dog had nowhere to retreat. The cat could get everywhere that the dog was. and. <sighs> Yeah, so, um, but as I say, we got our beagle after that. So our kind of, our net, you know, pet save was the same. And then they got along famously. Yes, they did. They did. Okay. Yep. So, well, yeah. So dogs of a feather prefer other dogs. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's some wonderful feline canine bonds out there, but it is trickier to make work, I think. Well, that is all the time we have for today's show. I want to thank you for joining us on this episode and for bringing Dog Edition along with you on your walk. We'll be back with another episode soon, but chances are you and your dog are going to be taking a walk between now and then. So we have some other things for you to listen to. Yes, fortunately we do because I have lots of dog walks and I spend a lot of time listening to podcasts. So we have lots of sister shows and you can find them on dogpodcastnetwork.com. And the easiest thing to do is just follow in your app. And then as soon as we release a new episode, it will automatically be downloaded and available for you to listen to. And if you enjoy our show, then please, when you're out on a dog walk, do share our show with other other people other dog lovers and let them know because it's the best way for our program to grow and you're working on something for the next episode of dog edition yes i am i have been and met a celebrity dog ottawa's like you know most famous dog <laughs> ottawa's most He's... famous dog okay yes any clues any hints um, he has a very important job and he works in a very well-known building in Ottawa. Ooh, we'll tune in. That's next time on Dog Edition. I'm Claire Mansell in Ottawa, Canada. And I'm James Jacobson in Maui. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha.